6.5 is on the road here in Miami at Cloudera sales kickoff. Dan, the excitement is intoxicating. Everybody seems excited about the new products, the customers, some customers we can't even talk about that we saw that was super impressive, but it totally makes sense. The intersection of data and AI, we're here. Yeah, it's good to be here, Pat. Uh, it's Elevate 2025. You always got to explain the fiscal year to people, but yes. it's fiscal year 25 for Cloudera. And it's all about the liftoff. It's all about getting that acceleration. And that coiled spring comes from getting product right. But you and I know as entrepreneurs, you and I know as people that are passionate about taking products and getting market fit and getting them to market, sales makes everything easy for every company on the planet. Meaning there's never a CEO or chief strategy officer that says, we want less sales. Yeah, in fact, I think sometimes you and I even joke that uh, increased sales just makes everything go smoothly. But listen, um, to, to completely architect uh, an incredible corporate strategy and product strategy, uh, it takes a lot of strategy work. And we just happen to have the chief strategy officer for Cloudera, Abbas, great to have you on the show again. Yeah, thank you. How you are guys? you? Very good. Fort Lauderdale, as always, is brilliant in terms of weather. You look great, Pat, as I was telling you earlier. Thank so you, you need to share some of your secrets. And Dan, you're fancy as always. I wasn't ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great hair day for me. Um, <laughs> but no, we do appreciate it. And thanks for joining us again. It's been uh, you know several times now, and we've enjoyed really following the journey. There's a lot of change here at Cloudera. Um, and so you know we had that slide that said, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Well, you are one of the same in a case where a lot of change has, and a lot of things are not the same. but. Overall, very encouraging. You know, spent a lot of time with Charles Samsbury, your new CEO, got to know your new chief product officer well, your new chief marketing officer well. Great to get to know the team a bit better, seeing some of the energy here at uh, Sales Kickoff. But uh, Abbas, one of the things that you, actually going back to the previous leadership and worked with us at the 6.5 and at our respective analyst firms was the AI strategy. Um, you were kind of trying in an era when Clutter wasn't necessarily getting it right. You were kind of the first to say, I want to mark our territory. Talk a little bit about kind of how that's going. Where are you at? How are you accelerating AI and really bringing it to market for Cloudera? Yeah, absolutely. So there are three angles to it. So one is the customer. So naturally, the landscape is evolving faster than we all can imagine. Like you and I were there at Davos. And if you remember last year at the promenade, there were two companies that were talking about AI. This year, every company is an AI company, whether they sell infrastructure or data center or cables, whatever the case might be. So naturally, there are a lot of boardroom discussions that are happening. But also, the biggest thing is, for companies in our space, infrastructure companies, the natural economic buyer has been the CIO or CDO. But in case of AI, oftentimes, the discussions go much higher in the organizations, which allows you to become a strategic partner of choice That's right. rather than just a tactical vendor. And a lot of our companies who've been working with us for a long time have actually taken the bet on us. And we have a lot of customers who are running use cases in production, whether that be Porsche, who are running their next gen electric vehicle design and after sales support for the Taycan on our systems, or whether that be Abvi, or even customers like Acuvia, who were here on stage and who mentioned today how they're leveraging our platform for the purposes of running large language models but even doing data governance across 110 countries. And that is a big, massive task. So there's this customer angle which is driving the pull. The second is in terms of product strategies. The last time we met, we obviously had just announced the enterprise AI ecosystem, and that is still a key position for us, meaning we do want to make sure that we are selling with the ecosystem. AI is not a one-person thing or one vendor um, does it all. Right. And there is an enterprise AI foundational stack that I've shared before, but largely if you were to ask me to share that of what that looks like. So if you try and follow me, at the bottom layer, you're talking about the compute. So whether that's the NVIDIA's or the AMD's or the Intel's of the world, or the hyperscalers, so public cloud, private cloud, GPUs, CGUs. Then you have the, the lake house, which is where we come in. A lot of our customers tell us that it's still 80 to 85% of AI is a data engineering problem. So you still have to do the ingestion, you still have to do the data wrangling, you still have to do the metadata governance, and we do that. But then you also want to do fine tuning and serving and LLM modeling and PEFT and all of that on top of that, which is what Clatter Machine Learning is now doing. Right. And naturally we made, made a lot of progress. 
But on top of that, there are specialized capabilities. So for us as Cloudera, we want to leverage the ecosystem there. So for example, we're working with Pinecone for all things vector databases. Vectorization for semantic search is a key capability. And we said we will go forward with that. We announced a partnership with AWS Bedrock, and that is going really strong. A lot of our customers are actually leveraging closed source models from Cohere and Anthropic, Claude, or anyone else through a single click in Cloudera Machine Learning. But at the same time, we build pre-built ReadyFlow connectors, which allows you to leverage models from Hugging Face. For example, there is a telco who are running Code Whisperer, and the use case is Contact Center Insights. So they're collecting the call logs from the support centers, summarizing them, and going forward with that. So to summarize the foundation stack piece, you have the compute layers, you have the lake house, you have all these capabilities, but then on top of that is AI applications. So our strategy in one line is to be able to enable AI applications as much as we can, and that is a key part. And the last bit is open source. So the community in general has grown much faster. There are multiple derivatives of Llama 2. There is a scientist uh, from one of the companies at Google and Anyscale who wrote about the fact that Llama 2 70 billion parameters one, is almost as efficient as GPT-4 for text yeah. summarization. Yes. But also, it's 30 times cheaper to run. Yes. And I think that is a big thing, which Huge. is for large enterprises, you want to run specialized tasks. It's not just general purpose models. So yes, GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 Turbo are great for general purpose, but there are other models like Mistral um, now you have some of the Llama derivatives, the long form that has come out as well. They are very good in terms of doing the specialized task. And as an open source company, we continue to pledge our primary strategy around open source model and the open source community. And we, we believe that that's one of the key drivers for us to take that forward as well. Yeah, I had never made the connection between your open source heritage and your open source AI strategy, but, but, but it makes sense. I mean, that's what enterprises uh, want, and you know, it, it is a multivariate world. And talking multivariate world is in terms of where workloads and the data actually sits. Still to this day, Cloudera is the only hybrid multi-cloud solution for data management. Uh, you have the cloud only folks, you have some people on-prem only, but you're still the, the only game in town, which I think is really important. Can you talk about maybe some recent ways you're using hybrid uh, to drive growth? I mean, you have this bi-directional, I mean, heck, you're even partnering with Snowflake in, in one instance. It's exciting. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it is a great point because nobody in the industry has defined hybrid. I mean, we've always said that hybrid is the ability to move data workloads and users bi-directionally without application refactoring costs. And that is important because most customers like HSBC and others will tell us that it costs between three, and a, three to five million dollars per application for rewrites. And it's a business continuity risk. So we have made strides in terms of replication manager, uh, but also the data mesh strategy that we have that allows you to do that. But the bigger thing is, as you mentioned, we have a very large oil and gas major organization they're pulling data sources from on-premises, but they're putting it on CDP public cloud. Yeah. And in certain use cases, they're actually putting it on Snowflake as well. So yes, we are working with some partners, but it's a different flavor of hybrid because for right. the customer, the data sources are on-premises, but they're running the compute on CDP in public cloud. And we're okay with that because that has allowed us to penetrate net new logos for organizations who were born in the cloud. Because right. back in the day, if you were born in the cloud, Cloudera wasn't necessarily a big alternative because our hybrid was on-premises and public cloud, which is still true today for companies who want it. So there are right. different flavors of hybrid. And then the second point around that is um, hybrid AI. So IBM talks about hybrid AI in a certain form factor, but we have multiple customers um, who are actually running large language models in a similar manner that I said, whereby they're pulling the data sources from one system, but that allows them flexibility and control, and they can get away from accidental architectures right. to be able to define a cloud-native architecture, even for enterprise AI use cases. Love that. So Abbas, I uh, believe it was in New York, at Evolve, you, you talked about this enterprise AI ecosystem. And uh, we got to sit down with you, I believe AWS maybe joined us. Mona and, from uh, AWS, yes. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, 
you know, this was like very early days. So in your strategy role, these are the things you're thinking about, right? You know, I heard you, you mentioned IBM. You're pulling these threads, getting the customers to come forward, getting the partners to come forward, because this isn't a, there isn't a single vendor. No matter how, many, how much these vendors want to be the only one, you need a combination of, of tools and enterprise apps and software and hardware and infrastructure and chips. I like to say silicon or semiconductors eat, yeah. eat the world. But uh, can you share a little bit? How is this progressing in the last, what is it? It's been three or four months. Three so. or four months, yeah. yeah. How's that going? Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty good. So we made a concerted decision of forming the enterprise ecosystem with a core set of players rather than having a long list of companies who could just come in and participate in this. It's less of an alliance. Right. It's more of a strategic partnership whereby we want to integrate with them. So the AWS Bedrock partnership is very strong. We, as I mentioned, there are a lot of customers who are coming to us and saying, we want to leverage the AWS models on platter machine learning. I actually wrote a blog with Matt Wood, their head of AI, explaining that how can you actually go about that. But NVIDIA is another one. So NVIDIA was part of that. We are still continuing to work with them in various capacities, whether that be Spark 3 being available in private cloud and data services, but most importantly, hardware acceleration. Right. And I do want to share that we are coming out with an AI starter kit. And then the idea is, and sometime in Q1, and to the extent that I can share, the idea is we want to give the customer something to get started and draw value rather quickly. So it'll, com it'll consist of four core pieces. They'll have elements around compute. They'll have elements around our professional services teams who can get you started and get delivery across use cases such as tech summarization or chat Q&A or co-pilot. It'll have an entire training and enablement module with on-demand videos, reference architectures and all that. But then obviously it'll also have the product right. platter machine learning. And I do believe our hardware acceleration partnership with NVIDIA will only help for that. Pinecone actually released a video on YouTube about how they're working with us and how semantic search querying is a capability that's actually helping out a lot of customers as well. So, we are continuing to do that, but the interesting thing is we're also working with some of the other partners. Um, I had a meeting with Google Vertex AI, and they've shown interest about that, and we do believe that over a period of time, we will get to a point whereby some of the other strategic partners will join the ecosystem, and hopefully we'll all collectively be able to help the joint customers we have. That's going to be a lot of progress in a yeah. few months there. That's impressive. It's, it's, been a, it's been a lot of work from the product and R&D organizations, but I also think that, as I said, the natural pull that we're seeing for customers, and once we start to see the large enterprises deliver production use cases and talk about it, that is driving a lot of the demand. A lot of the inbound is super helpful around that. Well, Bas, we appreciate you spending a little time with us here at uh, SKO 2025, and uh, actually it's SKO 2024, yes. Elevate 25, North of Miami, <laughs> south of Fort Lauderdale, in beautiful Hollywood, Florida, on the beach side. But it really, congratulations on the progress you've made. Now, as analysts will tell you, you got a, you got a, a road ahead. You have to prove that you can compete with those, you know, born on cloud players. But uh, as Pat and I said in front of the entire sales team today on the stage this morning, you've got a lot of provenance. You've got a lot of experience and a lot of history. And I look forward to seeing how someone like you, a very strategic thinker, can take that experience really impressive customer list and build the innovation and the partnerships to drive it into the future. I want to thank you for sharing a little bit of that here, and I'm sure you're going to be back with us soon. No, thank you very much. As always, I love talking to you guys. Always get great insights on all things technology, but also watches. So I'll continue <laughs> to talk to you about that. Dan, you're Twitter famous about your watches these days. I, um, so next time, hopefully, me. we'll talk about that. <laughs> that was not me. I love it. Thanks, Abbas. <laughs> and uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We really appreciate you joining the 6.5 here in not Miami, but Hollywood, Florida. Uh, we have had a great day. Hit subscribe, join us for all the other videos. Check out all the past videos with the boss here. We've had Cloudera a number of times. We look forward to having and chronicling their journey on the future, in the future. But for this episode, it's time to say goodbye. See y'all later. <laughs>